Hey there guys, this is your host Richard with another marvelous video. This time, Deadpool's secret, secret wars. When it comes to Deadpool, there's so much to say, yet words aren't enough. The loudmouth Mutate is one of Marvel Comics' more eccentric superheroes, to put it lightly. Did you know Deadpool fought in the Secret Wars of 1984? If you didn't, blame Wasp, you'll soon know why. So without further ado, let's explore Cullen Bunn, Matteo Lolly, and Ruth Redman's Deadpool's Secret, Secret Wars, which brings us the inside scoop on one of Marvel's greatest ever events. Dirty Dancing On the planet of Battleworld, Deadpool looks around to find the rest of the heroes, annihilated. His mask is barely clinging onto his face, and he's regenerating, clearly having taken some damage in the battle. After his muscle structure fully reforms, he walks around and sees Captain America's shield. It's been discarded, cracked, broken, and a part of it is on fire. Thor's hammer is wedged in the ground, his dead hand reaching toward it. Deadpool is the last hero standing, and he makes a note to himself to never anger cosmic beings. On a spaceship a few days earlier, the heroes of the secret Secret Wars met each other for the first time. Wasp introduced the famous Avengers. They comprised Wasp, She-Hulk, Captain Marvel, Captain America, Thor, Hawkeye, and Iron Man. Professor Xavier introduced his X-Men, comprising Storm, Nightcrawler, Rogue, Cyclops, Wolverine, Colossus, and the Dragon, Lockheed. Hulk was there too, along with Spider-Man. The Thing introduced his fellow members of the Fantastic Four, Sons, Susie Storm, Mr. Fantastic, Human Torch, and called himself the Easter Bunny. Magneto was among the heroes and introduced himself as a mutant, the master of magnetism and the biggest enemy of humans. Phew, that was a mouthful. But that's not all. Poking his head out from behind the thing, Wade Wilson appeared and introduced himself as Deadpool. He quipped about Wasp's exposition and commented on the impressive list of heroes she named. No one seems to remember him because he doesn't exist yet. Deadpool clarifies he's similar to Spider-Man but uses guns and is more charming. He also revealed that Iron Man helped him make his superhero name PG-13. Deadpool then turns to the X-Men, hoping they remembered him from when they teamed up to battle Eunice the Untouchable, just as he was a about to tell a crass joke, Wolverine shut him down saying he doesn't remember him and turned to the big brains for answers. Captain America, a born leader, chimed in saying they're all noble and just heroes. Deadpool cheekily agrees given his trigger-happy personality and points out the irony of Magneto's inclusion in their ranks. Captain America calls their attention to another spaceship and Deadpool, misunderstanding Cap's military jargon, looks the other way for the incoming vessel. Xavier telepathically sends great evil in the beings aboard the approaching spaceship as the team of heroes witnesses a horrifying scene sight right before their eyes. A galaxy was obliterated into nothing but dust. Deadpool, mesmerized by the colors the destruction leaves, confirms with the rest of them whether they see it too. Spider-Man pointed out that the show was not over, as the heroes witnessed a brand new planet forming near a big ball of fire. A flash of light shone on them as the Beyonder arrived with the offer of fulfilling the heroes' wishes if they kill their enemies. Deadpool, unable to contain his excitement at the chance to pit supermodels against each other to win his love, called the rest of the heroes to arms, raising his swords. He quickly changed his tune, seeing the hero's reaction and in a weak attempt at sounding kid-friendly, said that violence should be used as a last resort and that one should try to always foster peace. He asked Wolverine how he was keeping his homicidal tendencies at bay, especially in the midst of the holier-than-thou superheroes. Wolverine replied his pride contributed to most of his healing capabilities. Soon, the Beyonder teleported the heroes to the newborn planet where Captain America told them to remain alert as the entities on the other spaceship probably weren't as non-violent as them. While sharpening his swords, Deadpool quipped he's saddened at the possibility of having to kill some supervillains. Mr. Fantastic stretched for a bird's eye view and confirmed they were alone. Wasp pointed at Magneto, calling him the enemy, and to absolutely no one's surprise, they were all sent flying as Magneto proclaimed his superiority and that only Thor was possibly his equal. Deadpool noted that having Magneto on their side might be a good thing after all. Xavier pointed out that they needed a leader and asked Mr. Fantastic, aka Reed Richards, to take on the role. He declined, saying he was rather distracted as Deadpool makes a comment to Nightcrawler about Richards being useless without his wife, the Invisible Woman. Xavier then turned to the Hulk, aka Bruce Banner, who declined as well. Finding Captain Marvel nearby, Deadpool jokes about the Hulk's limited speech capabilities, which made him unsuitable for the position. Of course, Wasp recommended her leader, Captain America, as Xavier commended him on his immense courage. The Merc with a mouth had to chime in, calling Xavier a suck-up in between faked coughs. Wolverine refuses to accept Cap as his leader. He really is the worst Canadian, because he's the least powerful among them. Deadpool told Told Wolverine to reel it in, as Cap is the man and he didn't want to be audited for disobeying the star-spangled soldier. Thor was the deciding vote, and at least we know Battleworld wasn't a democracy, as the heroes accepted Cap as their leader. In a rather rare instance, Deadpool kept his trap shut, 
this time. In the present, Deadpool thinks about Cap's prediction of being decimated with a bolt out of the blue. He sits alone, on a rock, dealing with the gravity of the situation. Every hero decimated. Parts of their skeletal remains scattered around when they actually thought they could win the Secret Wars after the first battle. Cap motivated the heroes to stand their ground and take out the enemy's guns as the heroes began their first battle. The Lizard, aka Dr. Curtis Connors, attacks Deadpool, who simply pulls his white coat over his face. Noticing She-Hulk fighting the Enchantress, he takes the creepy route and proposes a three-way with the ladies. Disgusted by this, the two women actually stop fighting for a minute. He's then confronted by the Absorbing Man, aka Crusher Creel, who absorbs Deadpool's powers. As the cancerous tumors spread across Creel's body, Deadpool takes off his mask, saying that the secret behind his impressive set of powers is his cancer, and that's what Creel actually absorbed. He takes out his swords to end him, but notices Kang nearby, ready to shoot Cap from behind. Deadpool intervenes before he can take the shot and switches his sword. Kang teleports seconds into the future, appearing behind Deadpool, pointing a gun to his head. Deadpool simply knocked the Conqueror down with a low blow. He dragged Kang's incapacitated body and rejoined the rest of the heroes, pointing out he didn't kill the Conqueror, as that's against the Geno's Pizza convention. Noticing Xavier standing now, Deadpool asks him what happened to his wheelchair. The professor tells him the Beyonder has granted him the ability to walk. Deadpool points out breaking the fourth wall is plot convenience. Cap sends Storm to survey the area for shelter, as we're back to Deadpool in the deserted shelter. He makes his way out of there, determined to win the secret war and bring back the heroes from the dead. He strikes a pose, revealing his handsome face that is now restored. You thought we'll just be talking about the secret wars? Huh, why leave out the contest of champions? Well, it's just the finale, though, so uh, don't worry. Before the Beyonder started toying with the superheroes, having them fight in the secret wars, the Unknown and the Grand Master pit them against each other while their home planet Earth was kept in stasis. Deadpool interrupts the final exposition, making two points. Firstly, that the cosmic beings can't call themselves gamers without scattered cans of Mountain Dew and Cheeto-covered fingers. Secondly, he questions his exclusion from the contest. He complains about the elitist nature of superheroes who are not very keen on accepting outsiders. Backed by his own team of lesser-known superheroes like the Rocket Racer, Frogman, She-Man Thing, Dupe, the Pink Sphinx, the Vile Tapeworm, Howard the Duck, who, uh, let's be honest, is more of a parody, he annoys the two powerful cosmic entities into conducting a bonus round for them. Howard, Dupe, and Pink Sphinx are paired with Deadpool as the Unknown's champions and the objective is simple. Win the prize, win the contest. The Pink Sphinx almost instantly senses the location of the award and says it out loud enough for the other team to hear. As Deadpool prepares to go, he asks Dupe and Howard to hold off the other team while he retrieves the prize. While Dupe and Howard face off against the other team, Deadpool arrives at the location, the Platinum Playroom, which is, of course, a bar for adult entertainment. Okay, it's a strip club. Rocket Racer tries to stop them, but is telepathically ordered by Sphinx to entertain them with song and dance. Deadpool is impressed with the display of power and the duo makes its way into the playroom. Deadpool's just about to grab the prize when She-Man Thing tries to bind him in vines. Failing, she shoots him with fireballs as he easily evades them and grabs the prize. The coveted prize turns out to be a participation medallion, as the unknown declares the end of the contest. She removes her hood, revealing herself as Lady Death, and kisses Deadpool as he quips that his multiple near-death experiences were worth it. Deadpool gets a shield. On Battleworld, Deadpool is resolved to find a way to revive the heroes and prove himself worthy of their ranks. Lizard ambushes him and tries to kill him for what he did to Wasp. As the two fight it out, Deadpool mostly tries to save his handsome face. As the skirmish continues, Deadpool accidentally rips off the Lizard's tail, which angers him further. A few days earlier, while Professor X was convening with the X-Men to join Magneto's side after facing oppression by the other non-mutant heroes, Storm vehemently agreed, saying she was tired of bearing oppression. If they must be feared in order to be respected, then she's fine with it. Deadpool quips in agreement and adds that bears shouldn't be oppressed. Either. Wolverine says that Deadpool has no say in their decisions, as he's not a mutant. Deadpool asks him why he's such a hard ass. He points it out while flitting from one mutant to the other that he's one of them too, fully equipped to do exactly what they do. He told Wolverine that even though he didn't have claws, he's fully capable of stabbing. To Storm, he said even though he can't control the weather, he can feel a storm brewing between them. He leaned on Nightcrawler to flirt with Rogue, telling her that even though he can't teleport, he has a telephone that she can call him on. Turning to Wolverine, he held up three fingers and imitated exactly Xavier's mind-reading hand gestures, telling the clawed mutant to read between the lines. Spider-Man overheard them and decided to tattle to the other heroes. He webs the mutants, incapacitating them as he makes a run for it. Deadpool decided to follow him. As he was swinging his way to them, he comments on how the rest of the heroes should be made aware of the X-Men's decision to defect. As he was trying to duck and dodge his way out to throw Wolverine off his scent, he stumbled across a room with panelled circular discs showing him events of the past and possibly the future too. While Spider-Man was distracted, Deadpool interrupted him 
and the two started fighting. Deadpool was intent on stopping Spider-Man from telling on the X-Men. As blows were dealt and felt on each side, Spider-Man eventually emerged victorious after bringing the discs down all over Deadpool and swung away, leaving Deadpool wanting more, as his action hero fantasies, complete with banter and other cliches, were so close to being fulfilled. Picking up one of the discs scattered nearby, Deadpool says he lost the fight but received an impressive consolation prize. Deadpool returned to the X-Men, the circular disc in hand, similar to Cap holding his shield, and declared his days of jealousy were over. Xavier informed him that even though he doesn't like using his telepathic powers to forcefully rearrange another person's thoughts, he invaded Spider-Man's mind and erased his memory of listening in on the X-Men. Deadpool then decided to keep a lookout while the X-Men tracked down Magneto. Professor Xavier, noticing Deadpool's shield, asked him what it was. Deadpool said it was just a shield he picked up and that it was one of a kind. He points out that both Cap and him are the only two heroes with a shield, and as he said this, the iconic image of Deadpool posing in front of a fireside flashes on the shield. It's uh, one of the promotional pictures used for the first Deadpool movie released in 2016. As the professor points out that he sensed psychic forces from the shield and that it might possess telepathic powers, Deadpool says the professor might just be paranoid, but his shield displays what he's actually thinking as the words, back off cue ball and or I'll cut you flash on it. With that, he took the X-Men's leave, wishing them luck in finding Magneto. Back in the present, Deadpool's still fighting the lizard as he tries to reason with the reptilian with a doctorate and he's trying to find a way to save the wasp. The lizard stops attacking him as Deadpool tells him wasp is dead, as are the rest of the heroes, but he has a plan to bring them back. He gives the lizard his severed tail back as the duo go on their way to save the heroes. Deadpool takes us back to the time he was stuck under a mountain with the rest of the heroes. As an entire mountain hovered over them dangerously, he was the only one pointing out the obvious and holding his mystical shield above his head to protect them. The mountain fell on them with a huge crash, and as the dust settled, Deadpool remarked on the awful feeling of having a mountain drop on him. The heroes survived then, thanks to Hulk holding it up with all his strength. Cap asks Mr. Fantastic to come up with a solution to the problem. As Mr. Fantastic was working on the device to free the band of heroes, Hulk was struggling, what with holding up an entire mountain. Deadpool steps up to the task of taunting Hulk to keep him angry long enough for Mr. Fantastic to complete his device as an explosion ensues and the heroes are free. Deadpool is sad as his shield's power was drained out by Mr. Fantastic for his blowing up a mountain device. Deadpool clutched his shield that now displayed nothing but static as Cap compliments him. Drama Queen Deadpool bursts out at Cap instead. In the present, Deadpool and Lizard make their way to Zaji's village to ask her for help. Zaji was a silver-haired healer from an alien planet who offered sanctuary to the heroes in her village on the planet Battleworld. Deadpool inquires into the Lizard's change of heart for Wasp. The Lizard tells him Wasp once dressed his arm after he was injured. Deadpool points out that the Lizard has regenerative powers and that he wouldn't need bandages. Earlier, as Zaji was healing She-Hulk, Deadpool sat sulking. She-Hulk asked Deadpool whether he got hurt too and pointed out that Zaji was a healer. Deadpool said he couldn't be healed as Zaji approached him and touched his arm. She then proceeded to nudge his mask off as Deadpool hesitated. Zaji took off his mask as Deadpool touched his face and realized he'd been healed. Armed with his good looks and charms, he picked her up in his arms and said they'll have a happy future. It turns out Deadpool's shield wasn't actually dead as it conjured up an image of Deadpool clutching Zaji's dead body. The ultimate sacrifice. In the present, Deadpool meets with Zaji, and just as they were about to get comfortable, Deadpool stops and says that he doesn't have time for all that as he has a mission to accomplish. He takes her hand and asks her to come with him. Zaji responds by saying something in her own language. Deadpool responds that she's right and then goes into flashback mode. Deadpool takes us back a while where the assorted teams of heroes were charging into battle with the intention of rescuing She-Hulk, the mean green law machine. Captain Marvel, aka Monica Rambeau, coaxed the team to hurry up as She-Hulk was in trouble. To Spider-Man tried to assure her that She-Hulk was fully capable of taking care of herself and that she probably outnumbered the enemies with her strength. Deadpool quipped that Spider-Man's mathematical skills are proportional to that of a spider's, as the Doombot, which was their destination, was crawling with bad guys. He also quipped that he hoped She-Hulk would be so happy to see them come to her rescue that she might offer them some gamma-powered smooches. With this, he led the charge. As Hulk attacked the Doombot, creating an entrance into the fortress for the group of heroes, Deadpool asked him to be careful as the falling debris was ruining his beautiful hair and that Battleworld had a serious shortage of hair gel, so he had to make do with spit. As the team was storming the villain's hideout, Cap commanded them to spread out and start looking for She-Hulk. Deadpool heard a lot of booms, bangs and clangs coming from one general direction and decided to hide in a quiet corner and avoid the battle. Suddenly, he was attacked by Thunderball, to which Deadpool made a meta joke about the fact that having another chain and ball villain just proved the fact that villains don't coordinate their accessories and that it's simply embarrassing. Thunderball told Deadpool that the merc with a mouth could keep running his mouth, but he'd regret messing 
messing with him. Deadpool slashes the villain with his katana, but Thunderbolt reveals he's not susceptible to physical attacks since he's protected by Asgardian enchantments. The next attack came in like a wrecking ball to Deadpool's face. Deadpool was down as the villain picked him up, holding his collar, and asked him if he had any last words. The merc with the mouth asked Thunderbolt if his enchantments protected his insides too, and proceeded to unload a bunch of bullets in his mouth. The villain lay motionless on the ground as Deadpool quipped that Thunderbolt needed some enchanted antacids, and that it was the villain's fault for bringing a wrecking ball to a gunfight. Breaking the fourth wall, Deadpool braces us for what's about to come. Back to the present, we see Deadpool leading Zaji and the Lizard to the place where the hero's remains are. The Lizard refuses to accompany Deadpool, and he says if the cold-blooded Lizard can't stomach something, one can only imagine how awful it's gonna be. Zaji says something in an alien language to Deadpool, to which he laments that he wishes he could understand her. Breaking the fourth wall in typical Deadpool fashion, he apologizes for what he's about to do. Earlier, the Hulk and Thor met up with Deadpool and let him know that they found a device that could create any kind of clothing. As Deadpool questioned whether Thor discovered the earthly sewing machine, Hulk explained that the machine drew on mental energy and could create any piece of clothing he can think of. When Deadpool asks the Hulk why he chose the purple shredded pants, the Hulk gets irritated and tells him to try them, as he has better things to do. As Deadpool tried the machine, he got a new suit in black, white and all slimy. Deadpool commented that though it could use a few pockets, it makes him look badass. The suit changed styles with Deadpool's thoughts, including some of the iconic superhero costume designs, ending with the iconic Spider-Man black costume. Uh, wait, does this mean the symbiote first bonded with Deadpool before Spider-Man? Well, that'd explain its instability. <sighs> As Deadpool realized the suit was sentient and tried to get it off, he hoped that meddling with his thoughts hadn't made the being go all crazy. As Spider-Man came in inquiring about the machine, Deadpool suggested he try on black, as it's um, super slimming. Back in the present, Zaji witnesses the horrible sight of the dead heroes as Deadpool tells her that he brought her to this place to ask her to revive someone who's smart enough, like the Hulk or Mr. Fantastic, to help them out of the mess. We've been hearing about the dead heroes for quite some time now. Finally, Deadpool tells us the events of the big showdown. The whole team was charged at Galactus, the planet devourer, and were attacking him with all of their might. Wolverine suggested chopping off the villain's face as Deadpool jokes about his height, asking if Wolverine was tall enough to reach the towering Galactus. As Hulk charged at Galactus, he was attacked by his eye beams. Deadpool tried to seize that opportunity, but Galactus floated away, devoured his own ship, and then proceeded to devour the battle well. As Deadpool taunted the cosmic being, Mr. Fantastic said that the heroes have lost as Galactus would feast upon battle world next. The team retreated to the Doom base to assess the situation, and Cap sent Captain Marvel on a reconnaissance mission. As Xavier tried to establish a telepathic link with Captain Marvel, Deadpool slightly asked him to implant some dirty thoughts about him in her head, as well as check if he has a chance with her. Professor X asked him to stop playing games, as it appeared that Doctor Doom is draining Galactus's power for something sinister. In the present, as Saji revives Colossus, she's drained of her life essence as she reaches the brink of death. Colossus shouts at Deadpool for letting her kill herself to revive the heroes. Deadpool tells him that Mr. Fantastic, who was revived with her remaining essence, could come up with a way to get his health fully restored and take him to the medical bay. Deadpool then takes us back to not long ago, when the Doom base was collapsing. After it falls to the ground in a flurry of dust, there was a bright light that the Wasp pointed out to everyone. Doctor Doom emerged from it and tells the heroes that the Beyonder is dead, and he is now the supreme being in the universe. As the team gets ready to fight, Doom assures the team that he's reborn, and he's not gonna fight them, thus ending the war. Deadpool decided to talk to Doom, given he's handsome now and can relate to another handsome guy. They continue their banter as we're back in the present again as Deadpool walks into the med bay holding a barely alive Hawkeye, while Riches is working hard to bring back the rest of the heroes to life, and it's all thanks to Deadpool, who's slowly losing his handsomeness again. Wish fulfillment. Deadpool and Wasp were in an intimate situation, as she's summarizing the situation at hand and how the heroes now have to decide whether to fight Doctor Doom. As Wasp kept talking, Deadpool's mind drifted to Zaji, and as Wasp was telling Deadpool she feels it's nice that they got together, she realized Deadpool isn't listening and asked him what he was thinking about. Deadpool tells her he's listening as Wasp says she's hopeful for the future. In the present, as Colossus was carrying Zaji's body back to a village, Deadpool's face has fully reverted to his old cancerous one as Wasp comes to check on him. Wasp tells him that she knows that Deadpool brought in the alien girl to save the heroes. Deadpool tells Wasp that her name was Zaji and that he betrayed her. He tells Wasp the story of how he brought Zaji to the remains of the dead heroes and that she exhausted her life force in trying to resurrect them. Wasp tries to reassure him that it was not his fault, as he couldn't have known. Deadpool tells her that he should have guessed, as he's gone his whole life relying on his luck and that every time he finds someone that he likes, it's ruined by sharks or doombots. As Deadpool keeps monologuing, he reveals his cancerous face to Wasp, who's taken aback and flinches in horror. Deadpool, noticing this, tells her that he's not an animal, but a human being. Wasp tries to apologize and says she's 
merely startled. Deadpool tells her that she shouldn't be sorry, as he probably deserves that, and much worse for the way he treated her and Zaji. He confesses he was jealous, as Zaji was cheating on him with the Human Torch and Colossus. He finally tells Wasp that he looks like a monster, because maybe that's who he is on the inside. As the team converges at Doom's fortress, Doom told them that he has nothing to prove and is better than all of them, as Deadpool joked that he thought they were cool. To make amends for all the suffering he caused, Doom decided to grant all of them a wish to prove that he was a changed man. Deadpool's just about to pull out his wish list when Cap decided that the heroes will not take anything from someone like Doom. Deadpool refused the proclamation by telling Doom that Cap doesn't speak for the whole team, and Deadpool would take his wish too if Cap refuses. Doom heeds Cap's words, telling them their business is over, and Ulysses Claw uses his megaphonic hand to tell the heroes to leave. Deadpool groans that he thought they were in a bargaining state and that Doom would offer the team something more. In the present, the team fights against monsters that were sent by Doom to kill them. As the heroes are attacked by the monsters, Cap asks the team to show that they're made of stronger stuff than the monsters. Deadpool quips that he's not, and his stuff is actually fragile. Suddenly, Deadpool faces Ultron, who aims its blasters at the hero, but explodes in the next second. As Deadpool looks in wonder, it turns out Wasp took Ultron apart from the inside till it exploded. As Deadpool goes to Commander on a job well done, Wasp recalls with disgust, to which Deadpool tells her that Zaji saw him for who he was and didn't judge him for his looks. As Cap rushes inside Doom's base, he dropkicks Claw in the face and continues on. Deadpool decides that he'll follow Cap and jumps over Claw, running inside. Claw sits up and mutters, perfect. As the duo charges at Doom, Doom vaporizes them, calling them the Avengers. The duo, however, ambush Doom and attack him from behind, as Deadpool quips that if Doom called him an Avenger, then he should consider himself an official member of the prestigious team. Doom is incapacitated suddenly as Cap says he's having a psychotic episode and losing his hold on reality. Claw peeks from the shadow and shoots a beam of light at Cap. Deadpool jumps in front of him and is shot by the light. Deadpool is transported somewhere as the Beyonder reveals himself for the first time. He reprimands Deadpool for blocking him as he's just about to make his return and claim his power again. Deadpool makes a joke about the Beyonder's hairstyle and asks him where they are. Beyonder tells him that they're in the very heart of reality and eternity and that every event originates from there. In typical fashion, Deadpool breaks the fourth wall and remarks that they're really in a comic book. Beyonder asks him to release them and in return, they'll grant any of Deadpool's wishes. Deadpool pulls the Beyonder in a chokehold and tells them to be free and get to fulfilling wishes. As Deadpool returns back to the plane of reality, Doom is stripped of his newfound powers and disappears along with Claw. As Cap says that all the villains are gone, Deadpool remarks that either way, they've won the battle. As the heroes get together in celebration, Spider-Man is in his black Venom suit and he says that Cap's shield has been restored and it looks new. This confirms their theory of the planet's wish fulfillment energies. At the same time, Mr. Fantastic tells them that they can leave Battle World, and Cap calls Deadpool, only to realize he's not there. Iron Man asks him who he's talking to, as Cap looks puzzled. As the team is leaving, Colossus complains that it's unfair that they're all getting their wishes fulfilled, but Zaji is still dead. When the team returns home, we see Deadpool narrating the stories of the Secret Wars to some bystanders while eating a hot dog. When the man asks why Deadpool and Cap are not the best of friends, he doesn't really know, he can only think of one possibility. The hero simply forgot he fought with them. As the vendor asks him whether that was his wish, to be a heroic pariah, he says it wasn't, but it was probably someone else's wish to forget him, and the sheer power of the wish caused the other heroes to forget him as well. Wasp flies nearby, a tear rolling down her cheek. When Deadpool was asked what his wish was, he says that he wished for Zaji to come back to life and that he sent her far away to a place where she could live out her days peacefully, without the interference of the superheroes and where their secret wars will not affect her. Marvelous Verdict In the 1984 comic book series by Jim Shooter, Mike Zeck, and Bob Layton, the cosmic being known as the Beyonder was so mesmerized by Earth's superheroes that he created a whole new planet called Battleworld as an arena for the heroes to fight the villains. Retrofitting this planet with weapons and advanced technology, he teleported the heroes and villains to Battleworld, pitting them against the other, offering to fulfill the heart's desire of every individual in the winning team. The heroes comprised pretty much the same team as Deadpool claimed, with the exception of Spider-Woman. Pretty fishy how she's not mentioned by Deadpool. However, in line with the original comic, Magneto was among the heroes but quickly became non-aligned with either group as his inclusion was questioned by Wasp. Deadpool fought alongside them too, as the comic book discussed in this video claims. The villains comprised those that Deadpool fought along with Dr. Octopus, Molecule Man, Ultron, Volcana, and the Wrecking Crew. Remember Thunderball? He was part of the Wrecking Crew. The events are mostly similar, except for the obvious fact that Deadpool saved them all and brought in Zaji to revive the dead heroes after Doom killed them with a bolt as they refused to join him. Nonetheless, the retcon of Deadpool bonding with the Venom symbiote first is something to think about, and whether the events as Deadpool tells us really happened or not is completely left on the reader. What do you think? <laughs> do let us know in the comments below.